Welcome to ESD Basics uh, Bite Size Part 6. Today we're going to be looking at ionisation and how and when to use ionisers. As we have just identified, insulative items should be changed for ESD safe versions wherever possible. However, there are a number of process essential insulators that cannot be changed. So therefore, the second basic principle of ESD control is to neutralise essential insulators with ionisation. As we know, non-essential insulators should be removed from the ESD protective workstation and replaced with ESD safe versions. Insulators by definition are non-conductors. Neutralisation may be a necessary part of an ESD program because grounding will not remove charges from insulators such as common plastics. The elimination of charges on insulators does occur naturally by a process called neutralisation. Ions are charged particles that are present in the air and as opposites attract, charges will be neutralised over time. A common example is a balloon rubbed against clothing and stuck on a wall by static charge. After a day or so, the natural ions in the air will be attracted to the balloon and it will eventually neutralise the charge and the balloon will drop to the floor. As we have already identified earlier, Neutralisation occurs naturally, however this doesn't happen fast enough for it to protect against static damage in the high-tech manufacturing environment. So to speed up this process, an ionizer creates billions of ions. Ionizers employ high voltage to produce a balanced mix of positively and negatively charged ions, usually with fans to direct the ions flow over the work area. Ionisation can reduce static charges on an insulator or isolated conductor in a matter of seconds, thereby reducing their potential to cause ESD damage. All non-essential insulators such as those made of plastic and paper must be removed from the workstation. Ionisation or other charge mitigating techniques shall be used at the workstation to neutralise electrostatic fields on all process essential insulators if the electrostatic field is considered a threat. The primary method of static control charge is direct connection to ground for conductors, static dissipative materials and personnel. A complete static control program must also deal with isolated conductors that cannot be grounded. Insulated materials and uh, people moving around who cannot use wrist or heel straps or ESD control flooring and footwear for example. Air ionisation is not a complete replacement for grounding methods, it is one component of a complete static control program. Ionisers are used when it is not possible to properly ground everything and as a backup to other static control methods. There are various types of ionisers that can be used in the high-tech electronics manufacturing environment as you can see here. It is also important to note that ionisers require periodic cleaning of emitter pins and must be kept in balance. Otherwise, if they are significantly out of balance, instead of neutralising charges, they can actually charge items. I have been explained to you ionisation. Let me just do a quick demonstration to show you how it works. What I'm going to do is take my uh, two paddles. Remember, one is conductive, one is insulative. Uh, rub them together. And uh, what I'll do is put a known charge, put a charge onto the uh, uh, the insulator, and we can see that it's over a, a thousand volts. If I then turn on my ionizer and hold the charge paddle in the airflow of the ionizer, and then once again hold it over the meter, we can see that the charge has just about disappeared. <laughs> 